Hey, this is Glendon. Just to let you know, there is a new webinar that's jumping off the first week of January. Pimping Craigslist, the Hustlers Edition. Craigslist has made a lot of changes, and a lot of people love that old book, and I'm redoing it, and I just thought it would be great to do a workshop. So the link for that is below. Check it out. This is a paid course, so the best way to get in is to sign up for Hustlers University. And I will get this done in the first month. So if you just sign up for a month, you'll be good. But the best deal is the yearly plan. Just letting you know. So with that, we're going to talk about putting some money in your middle bank, damn it. Are you broke? Is your middle bank on NSF? Could be. That could be the reason that you're not happy. Hey, this is Glendon Cameron with another video for you today. It's a little cold outside, but I'm going to warm it up. This video is about how much money is in your mental bank. How much money do you have in your mental bank? I know, like, you're like, what? Mental bank? I didn't even know I had a mental bank. And if you didn't even know you had a mental bank, that's really a problem. Really. It is a serious, serious problem. Now, this is a different concept. This is the parallel on the opposite side, <laughs> call it the back end, call it the reverse side of the mirror of my poverty mindset video. This is about your wealth mindset. And when I say wealth, I'm not talking about money. There are certain things you need to do, certain currency that needs to be deposited into your mental bank before you can realize cash, money, coin, ducats, you know, a little change in your pocket. And one of those things is gratitude. There are many people who are miserable, unhappy, have no gratitude in their life, and they wonder why they are fiscally poor. You must understand, cash money is a byproduct of a larger process, usually a goal that is bigger than just earning money. You have to serve people. But not to get too far off the topic of your mental bank. And like I said, many people don't even know that they have a mental bank. And that bad boy is empty. Or worse, NSF. Non-sufficient funds. You are not just broke. You're in the negative. So let me teach you how to fill that bank up. First of all, you've got to understand that you are where you are in life based on all the decisions you made. You got to take ownership of that. The minute you do that, you'll start to see changes in your life instantly. Now, on filling up your mental bank, you got to understand how your mind works. Just saying, I want to make a lot of money can make you a lot of money. But the better process, the more long-term process is, I want to help a lot of people. You do that, the money is assured to come someday. I said someday because it's not where you help a lot of people on Monday, you get a check on Friday. Sometimes it works that way, but in the beginning, it often does not. So if you're just starting this, get away from the immediate gratification monster. Now, the second thing is start filling up your mental bank. If you're a person that is miserable because you feel that the world has cheated you, you feel that people owe you things. You feel that, or worse, that God has forsaken you. Stop that shit now. Man up, woman up, grab your nuts, pinch your nipples, do what you need to do because you have to change your thought process. Now, the currency that I want you to put in your mental bank, as I referenced early, is gratitude. I want you to throw some gratitude in there. In this video, as an exercise, Find 10 things today, not tomorrow, not tonight, not when you fucking feel like it, but today that you are grateful for. That is currency that goes into your mental bank. When you are grateful for the things that you have, you get more things. When you're ungrateful for the things you have, you tend to lose them. So with that, be fine. 10 things, 10, write them down and say it out loud. Go down your list and I am grateful for this, 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 and this. You'll feel better. You will. Trust me on this. Okay, now the second thing on filling up your mental bank. You have to replace misery 
despondency with hope. And when I say hope, I'm not talking about weak, yes, we can hope. I'm talking about hope married to a plan of action. You can hope all day long, but if you don't put any action towards that plan, it's just bullshit most of the time. I will tell you, if you do this exercise of writing down your goals with no action plan, that actually increases the chance of those things happening tenfold, a thousandfold. So, because... But the thing is, it's action. It's action. Okay? It's action. You actually took the action of sitting down, writing some stuff out to create your plan. Action is the key. So you got your 10 things that you're going to write down. Now you're going to replace despondency, despair with hope. Say you're living with your mom and you can't stand that shit. Put this on your action plan. I am going to move out of my mother's house and to coin from the uh, commercial and I'm going to move into a place that I want to move in. See, this is where people mess up. They'll go ahead and create a goal and just like, I want to get the fuck out of my mother's house. That can land you in jail. That can land you in a worse situation. That can land you somewhere you hate even more because your goal is to get out the house. Your goal is not to get your own. You have to be very, very specific with your intent to get what you want. So in the process of replacing this misery, everything that's pissing you off, making you sad, put it on a list and said, I'm, I'm releasing you. I'm releasing the misery. I'm releasing all of this stuff that is making me sad. You're letting it go. Just letting it go, letting it go. Put it on a list. You're done with it. Because when you do this exercise of release, because one of the immutable laws of nature is only one thing can occupy one space at one time. So if you've got misery in your mental bank, in your mental bank, and that's a negative, that's NSF, that's negative. So your bank is full of misery, and there's no joy that can come in. When your bank is jacked up like that, you have a serious mental currency problem. So to replace that, you gotta get rid. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta clear out all that negative stuff. It's got to come out. You, you have to get rid of it. So release it. Put it on the list. Some of you may have ten things. Some of you may have twenty. Some of you may have thirty. Some of you may have fifty. Get that shit out of your mind. You want to clear your mental bank so you can put some fresh, positive currency in your bank. When you get rid of this stuff, the negative stuff, that's why I don't deal with negative people. That's why I frequently delete negative comments. I don't entertain them. I don't talk to them. And I made a, a business decision and a personal decision to not respond to any hate videos or negative videos just to operation ignore, bitch. Just leave it alone because when you're casting out negativity, it's on your fingers too. You cannot throw negativity, you cannot give negativity to someone else without it being on your fingers also, which means you're tainted by it also. So it's just best to get rid of it. it. Took me a while to learn that lesson, but you have to get rid of this stuff. So when you're getting rid of the negativity, the despair, and the hope, you leave an open vessel. And just to really demonstrate this as simplistically as I can, you go to someone and you, you, you approach them like this. You have your hand as a fist, right? And you try to try to shake their hand. You can't do it. If your hand is closed, you cannot embrace someone else. When your mental bank is full, it's closed. Nothing else gets in. You can't spin the negative currency. Therefore, your life goes nowhere. So now we got two exercises to actually put positive currency in there and to get rid of the negative stuff, to get out of that NSF status. So the next thing you need to do is talk to yourself in the affirmative. But this is none of that, I'm a good person. It's none of that stuff. I'm a good person, but you will create an action plan, a process on becoming that person. You just can't say it, you have to do it. So. You're broke, okay? How do you become unbroke? Service. 
creating a product, writing a book, selling something. You have to do something. Now, this is one of the sad things about having an NSF status in your mental bank. It robs you of physical energy, which means your situation is already dire and it's going to become worse because you're not doing anything about it because you've robbed yourself of the energy to create and facilitate change. That's why you have to get rid of that stuff. There's a lot of pills. There's a lot of therapy for depression because there are many people, their mental bank is full of negativity. It is chock full, NSF, non-sufficient funds. You cannot buy anything positive because all you have is negative currency. So it doesn't really benefit you. So the path to change is going to be an interesting one and an individual one. Everyone's going to get different results because everyone's in a different place. Everyone has their thought process, the things they're dealing with. They're just in a different place. So take your list and start filling up your mental bank. Now, this is another way for you to put positive currency in your mental bank. Go around your house, right? Find some shit that you really love. Take 5, 10, 15 of those things, right? Some shit you really love. Now pick one of the things that you really love and give it to somebody. It could be a friend. It could be a homeless person. Don't care. Pick something that you really love and give it to someone. Take it to goodwill, whatever. Because what you're doing by demonstrating that is you're demonstrating a positive expectation. You expect at some point to have the money, the ability to get that back and or greater. Because it's like love. Many people are looking for love and they don't realize love is a reflection of what you put out. If you don't have love in your life, it's because you're not putting love out. It's that simple. It is that simple. A lot of people want to make it overcomplicated. Oh, folks don't care a damn about me. No, you are not putting love out. And that's why you're not giving it back. And that's how it works with this currency. So you find some, give it away. Something. Doesn't have to be expensive, doesn't have to be your television, but it has to be something that you really like. Just give it to somebody. Now, the second exercise is I want you to go around the house and think of some stuff that you could help. Well, actually, not go around your house. I want you to think of a friend, a stranger, a relative that's in need. Someone that's in need. Go out and do one good deed for that person. Not 10, not 20, not 30, not 40. One. Do one good deed for that person. This is in addition to giving away something that you really love. This is in addition to that. So what you're doing is you're putting positive experiences in your mental bank because I want you to ask yourself when is the last time that you helped someone out that you didn't know one of the biggest things here on YouTube that drives me to distraction is there are a lot of people who want help but they will not help anyone it cracks me up when you help people when you put out when you really give of yourself people will want to give back to you they will want to give back to you they would want to help you achieve your goals, achieve your aim. They, they really would. So another way to put currency in your mental bank is to stop thinking negatively. This is something I struggle with myself for many years because I have a very aggressive personality and I'm that guy that looks at the worst possible outcome and prepares a contingency plan for it. Not saying don't do that, but do it and don't dwell on it because that has saved my bacon many times. There's, You can still create the plan and you can still look at the situation proactively, but don't think about it all the time. Create your plan and then think about the good stuff. As I like to say, I'll see you on the good side. Think about the good side of the situation because you will focus on that and you'll draw energy to the good stuff, to the better side of your situation and I'm a person that's speaking to you 
that was uh, homeless at one point. I know about negative experiences. I know about the repercussions of fucking up. And they can be very harsh. They can be exceptionally harsh. So this isn't some guy that's just saying, it's going to be okay. It's really, no. I'm saying you can make it okay when you realize that you're doing things that made it bad. You have that power. You have that ability. But it all starts with ownership and accountability of your life. If you keep feeling like a victim, you will get victim results. If you start feeling like a hero, someone's going to put a cape on your ass. That's the distinction between winning and losing. It's a subtle nuance that if it was on the dial, it would be like that. That's just a switch. It's not this big, grand, sweeping arc of change. It's a small change turning a switch from, I'm not going to do that, to I'm going to do this. It's that simple. And you have to practice turning that switch on. Because it's been in a negative position for so long, that's your default. That's what you're going to default to. That's what you are going to go to. So understand that if you want more money in your mental bank, it's a job. It's a preoccupation. It's something you have to do. Negative energy will flow into your mental bank with really no effort. None whatsoever. It doesn't take much. It doesn't take much. But putting that positive energy, once you develop a process, once you develop a plan, once you get that stuff going, then the positive energy will start hopping in your bank in the same manner that the negative energy. So you're just gonna you're gonna be mentally wealthy. You want to be mentally wealthy before you are fiscally wealthy. Because say you get fiscal wealth, which is cash or uh, financial success, and you are still fiscal, uh, mentally poor. Going back to my poverty mindset video, you are um, screwed because you're gonna do something to lose that money, you're gonna fuck it up, you're gonna piss it away. So it is incumbent upon you to get your mental bank together as soon as possible. And it's a daily process. Uh, on my Facebook page, I often put up that I'm very grateful and I'm very, very grateful for the things I have in my life. I know what it's like to not have a car. I know what it's like to not have a home. I know what it's like to be hungry. I know what it's like to look at people who said they were your friends and when you were ass out, they're not there. I experienced all of those things in a six month period, just back to back to back. No job, reduction in my friends. And I don't wanna hear that excuse. Well, they never were your friends. Yes, they were my friends. They made a decision to no longer be my friends because my situation changed. I had two classifications. I had people who made that decision not to be my friends. And I had people who stood up and were more of a friend to me than I had ever been to them before in my life. It's a it's a learning, it's a learning, it's just a big, big learning process. So understand when you take full ownership of you and take full ownership of the deposits into your mental bank, you become mentally wealthy. Now let's talk about being mentally wealthy. When you're mentally wealthy, bad things don't rock your day. Say you wreck your car. You're like, I'm safe. I walked away from this. I got insurance. You ain't stressed about that. When you are mentally poor, you will go on. Your back hurts. Your sciatics acting up. You'll talk about that shit for years. Uh, unbeknownst to many people, I was in an auto accident. Rainy day actually uh, slid into someone going down a hill. Totaled out the car. But I walked away. I walked away. I had no injuries, no, nothing. I was very grateful for that. I was grateful for my pain. When uh, I wrote a line on my new blog, be sure to check it out, it, when it hurts to breathe. Uh, when I was living at boarding house, I had some dental problems. And when I breathed too hard, it, the, the wind, the air, my breath on my teeth made it ache. It literally hurt to breathe. And I became thankful for that because 
I, it gave me a lot of compassion for people in pain. It gave me a ton, because when you are going through that, when you, every moment that you exist, you're in pain, it's hell. And I'm grateful because I got past that. I got lucky. I know it's going to sound strange, but my uh, situation fixed itself. I know it sounds strange. Just it fixed itself. I I'll tell you something that a lot of people don't know. I am supposed to wear glasses, and uh, no one has ever seen me in glasses, say, in maybe 20 years. Recently, I had my eyesight tested. My eyesight is better than it was 20 years ago. Just saying. Mental bank, when it's positive, you know what I'm just saying? When you are like taking ownership of that stuff and refusing to submit. Now, I'm not going to tell you if you need glasses. Don't wear. They're like, I was listening to the dude on YouTube and he said he didn't wear his glasses and his eyesight got better. And that's why I ran into the wall off. No, don't be that person. <laughs> don't be that person. You need your glasses, wear them. It, it was a long time, but I made my eyes strong. It took years. It took years. Because I hated wearing glasses. Yes, I'm vain, believe it or not. But not actually vain, really. That shit when it's on your nose, it drove me crazy. Did not wear them in school, refused. So when you own your mental bank, when it is on full, when the dividends are making dividends with the dividends, things don't rock you. And it gives you resolve and it gives you energy to deal with adversity because see that's the thing adversity is coming i don't care who you are you're going to have something that we would deem as adverse you're going to have trials tribulations things that go wrong things that upset you things that create drama in your life these things are going to happen but how you relate to those things is what's going to the, you know predicate the outcome it's going to be based on that how you relate to that stuff because if you relate to it with a mental bank that's in the negative, you're gonna you're gonna go at it negatively. You're gonna go at it extremely negative because that's your default. But if you have a full mental bank, full of ducats, positive ducats, you know you got some uh, euros up in there. You got all kinds of stuff going on. It gives you the resolve to deal with that adversity from a stronger posture. See, I'm not the guy that's going to say, oh, there will be no adversity. What I'm going to say is you will be able to deal with it and you'll be stronger. You'll have more resistance. You will be more resolved and absolute to create solutions versus being led by your emotions and being just like, I'm screwed. Never say I'm screwed. Never say I'm done. Don't say those words. Say well, you know, I don't know how to figure this problem out yet, but I will. Give yourself the option and the time to get to a place where you can figure it out. Don't give up. That's what a lot of people do. They give up because it's easy. Being your own personal hero is not easy, but it's worth it. It's totally worth it. So more things that you can do to put more currency into your mental bank. Take a trip. Take a trip. I know it's like, what? Take a trip. And when you're at the bar or when you're at the um, restaurant, I want you to look around and spy the most unfortunate looking person you can think of. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually going to say that. Someone that you think is ugly. Yep, I said that. Find that person or find someone who looks a little shabby or find someone that looks like life is kicking them in the ass. It's very easy. And go up to him and say, hey, you don't know me, but strange thing. There's this guy on YouTube. I want you to say it just like this. And he said, I should find someone that I think needs a little pick me up. So I am going to pay for your drinks. I'm going to pay for your dinner and I'm out. Just do that. Whenever I do that, people act like they won the freaking lottery. I'm telling you, you know, it's a little thing. So, and I said, take a trip because... Part of your mental deficiencies is your environment. And sometimes you need to get out of your environment so you can reflect a little bit better on it. it. Makes a huge difference. So just go out and do stuff for people. Just do stuff for people. Now, 
I'm on YouTube and I'm all about that dollar bill. Yes, I am. But what many people don't know is I have like scholarships. I've had people I've done consults for. And the thing is, I'm going to find you. You're not going to you're not going to come to me and say I want a consult or I want a scholarship. That's not happening. I bless people like that who I see who are in action. So if you're just sitting around whining or you know bitching on Facebook, bitching on YouTube, just a miserable person, you will never ever come on my radar. Actually, I would put you on my naughty list. That's right. Not only does Santa Claus have a list, the Jeepers has a list. Naughty or fucking nice. And if you're not fucking nice, you're not on my list. So it is it's part of this grand experience of being human. Because when I talk about mental wealth, this is what will get you through some of the hardest days of your life. Because I think that some people, and this is just me making assumptions, making very grand, sweeping assumptions. When I worked in the hospital, I saw a lot of terminally ill people. I saw people with cancer who smiled every day. And every time I saw them, they had a smile on their face. And these people were in extraordinary pain. And they were able to smile, and it made me feel ashamed of myself. Because I was bitching about some shit that was very trivial. And I remember this lady came in. Um, her name was Susan. Beautiful red-haired girl. Uh, she had breast cancer. And she came in. And we were just talking. And just she left, she stumbled. Because the cancer had spread to her legs. And she was terminal. And I helped her up and everything. And she looked at me and she gave me this big-ass smile. And, you know, that smile changed me. It changed me forever because if someone could smile going through that, and she did um, pass on about two months later, if someone could smile in that amount of pain, that amount of hurt, that amount of uncertainty, she was a mother, she had small children, and she could smile through that shit, I don't have any problems. That's how I look at it. That's how I compare and contrast my life. It's like, hmm, you don't have that. You don't have high blood pressure. You don't have diabetes. You don't have a lot of, you really don't have any health issues, you know, anymore. Health is one of the most valuable assets you can have. Many people are like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm happy. You get sick, get really sick, and you'll know what I'm talking about. So understand, for your mental bank to be really, really full, you got to make consistent deposits. I don't care if it's a quarter. I don't care if it's a nickel. In the final tally, it all adds up by putting in those mental deposits. That's how you become mentally wealthy. It's a process. And it's a never-ending process. There's no such thing as done. There's no such thing as complete. There's no such thing as you've passed this test, Mr. So-and-so or Mrs. So-and-so. It's not like that. It's an ongoing concern. The more money you put into your mental bank, the more money you will make out here. So you need to be stuffing that bad boy as fast as you can with nickels, coins, whatever you can put, whatever good deed. Now, let's, since we're talking about life and we're talking about putting stuff out in the universe, uh, let's talk about karma. Uh, many people say, you know, bad karma, good karma. I don't believe in karma. I don't believe that evil people who've done things are going to get just theirs. That is a fantasy that many people tell themselves to make themselves feel better because they didn't take action. Oh, I'm not going to do... No, they're going to get theirs. They're going to get theirs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they're not. Universe doesn't work like that. Universe does not give a shit if you're evil. It does not give a damn if you're mean. It doesn't give a damn if you're good. It doesn't. It's energy. And what I'm saying is... If you put out a lot of energy that's deemed positive, you fill your mental bank because it's a it's not reductive. Negative energy is reductive. You put negative energy out, you reduce your energy. You put positive energy out, you build your energy. See, it's it's like a step-up converter. If you've ever taken electronics, like you ever look at these things on power lines, these transformers, the currency has to come to your house at a certain rate. And these transformers keep the current consistent. So when it comes to your house, there's this big block that's on the that's on all of your electronic devices. There's a block that's 
it bring it steps the current down. So when you are doing good stuff and you run it through your mental bank, you you're getting more dividends because you're stepping it up. Negative energy is reductive. Positive energy builds. It adds to it. See, the thing is, you think that when you put some stuff out that's coming back to you, what you're missing is when you create that positive action, you get your dividends immediately. I'm being quiet so you can reflect on that. You get your benefits immediately. Immediately. So, knowing that, knowing what you do, and this is one of the reasons when I was in the storage auction business, we gave so much stuff away. We gave a ton of stuff away. I'm talking bedroom sets. I'm talking, and my partner was a very altruistic type person. Uh, she actually uh, had foster kids in her house at one point. She was that kind of person. So we were both of the giving nature because that creates that positive energy. And where a lot of people who are givers that give and set up charities, they, they're doing a lot of stuff right. And what they're doing wrong is they don't have the business sense that's married to it. Because on this system, in the United States of America, the world, whatever you want to call it, it's a system. You can't just do one thing. You got to do a lot of stuff. So you can be a good person and you can give a lot of stuff away, but you got to understand how the system works. That's one of the reasons charity struggles so much because there's this anaphora that, you know, if you're doing business or making money, there's something wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with making money. There's, wrong, there's something wrong with stealing from people. There's something wrong with murdering people. There's something wrong with larceny. Yeah, that's wrong. But there's nothing wrong with making money. And a lot of people have that mindset that if they're making money or they're making too much money or to quote that thing that a camel could get through the eye of a needle quicker than a richer man. You know, I, I've reflected on that and I've, I've looked at that and it goes back to indoctrination that money's evil. Money is a tool only. Money is not evil. It's not even close to evil. Doesn't even know what evil is. Man has evil intent in his heart. And that is where the problems begin and end. That's where the problems are. Right there. So, you want to fill up your mental bank. You want to be happier. Take actions on a consistent basis to keep your mental bank flush. To actually create a better life for yourself because once you get your mental wealth together, your mental currency flowing and building and earning interest and earning dividends, you will have an immediately better life. Immediately. You'll feel better. You'll have more hope. You'll have more confidence. You will be a different person because for your outer world to change, your inner world must change first. Many people are trying to solve internal situations with external solutions, and it's never gonna work. When you have a virus, well not a virus, you have bacteria, and it's inside of your body, the treatment, the antibiotic must go internally to treat it. They don't rub it on your skin. Some things they can, like you know, testosterone or nicotine patches. That's a different thing altogether. But essentially, you have to deal with the problem on its level, where it is, to solve it. So, what's in your mental bank? Do you even know you have one? Are you taking care of it? Are you putting money in it? Are you earning your keep on this universe? And that's another thing. We all have responsibilities down here. And a lot of people, are, they're not earning their keep. They're simply not earning their keep. They're just kind of hanging out, hoping that someone else will save them. Yeah, I had to stop because there was a trooper, and I was like rolling. Apparently, he's asleep. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was funny. But are you earning your keep? Are you really, really doing what you need to do to be a better steward of your mental bank? something to think about. All right, this is Glendon Cameron. I'll see you on the good side. Check out my new blog, Hustler's Food, feeding the soul of your hustle. All right, this is Glendon, and I'll see you on the good side.